check for advanced restart button it's available here i am booting into require using that if you don't have that you can use the power button and volume up button to boot into recovery This is the latest TWRP recovery for POCO X3. Go to wipe section here and select advanced wipe and select Dalvik cache package cache metadata data and swipe here to wipe it. Once that has been done, again go to home section and select install and select the micro SD card wherever you downloaded the ROM zip files. First flash always the firmware. If it is included also, flash the firmware. Surya Global 13.0.1.0 the same firmware you need to flash done again go to home section and select install and select the rom j file in this video i am going to explain about this dubfest 13 as you can see it takes a little bit of time to flash the rom wait until it gets flashed as you can see the rom zip file has been flashed successfully go to home section and select your wipe and select format data and type here yes and press this tick button then again go to home section select reboot and select the system this is how the flashing method of dubfest android 13 based rom for poco x3 slash nfc follow the same methods you will never face any problems and recent twrp recovery video i already made check out my channel use the same recovery and same firmware and rom zip file and same methods you will never face any problems here we go it's going to boot into Darfest OS. In this video, I am going to explain everything in detail. Stay tuned till end of the video and let's begin this video. Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my new video. This is Sampath. You are watching Sampath Samfx YouTube channel and this is Poco X3 Custom ROM Reviews. Darfest version 13, Android version 13 based on and security patch is 5th October 2022 which is latest available kernel user is 4.14.290 LAUM kernel has been used Linux status is enforcing this is the Darfest OS guys and I have been running the CPU throttling test from last 7 minutes and 6 seconds you can see maximum is 193 average is 188 and minimum is 170 and this is 200 threads settings you can see and that's how it is and it's throttled to 94% of its max performance this is just an idea is it going to throttle a lot or not here it's fine as of now the rom is having very good thermal capabilities and this is the quick settings panel this is the one thing uh, i can say the bug or whatever it is i really don't like the uh, controls uh, this control center or quick settings panel there is an automatic brightness option here to choose between automatic and normal mode you need to go into display settings and even in the edit section i try to find out there is no option like that this is a big thing for me at least i don't know about you guys there should be an option to disable auto brightness sensor or enable it that's simply missing in the quick settings panel i hope they can add and this is the awkward looking you can see it's looking like a dock here you need to get here a active apps notifications actually but it is looking little bit weird compared to any other android 13 roms i test lot more roms for a lot more devices this is the one weird thing i have seen in this dubfest was this quick settings panel or whatever the control center panel is little bit uh, not cooked properly i can say it's looks like they haven't checked it properly i don't know there should be an automatic brightness option and here the dock like settings should be changed here and android 13 feature like it's moved down the settings and the power button but still i don't um, satisfy that much compared to any other android 13 ROM. it's fine no lag in the uh, quick settings panel and this is the home scan this is the app draw rivet and no suggestions okay wallpapers and style you get these kind of options here there is no wallpapers here just the dubfest wallpapers has been pre-installed here and wallpaper colors and basic colors the combination of colors and the simple colors options are unlimited here 
because this is an Android 13 feature and dark theme option is available. Themed icons are still in beta upgrade. You get up to 6 into 6 and those things are working fine. If I go into widgets, you get the material you design that's been there from Android 12 that has been carried out to Android 13 also. Little bit of tweak. You won't see any visible difference in Android 13. This is the Darfish OS. I hope this is the first build of Poco X I I am reviewing in channel. I really disappointed the quick settings panel. There is no automatic brightness sensor. I don't know why they have skipped this. And this is the settings panel. It's fluid enough. But what I noticed is the user interface was no lags, but touch response a little bit taking time. I don't know whenever you play game, you will come to know more about that. But as of now, I can notice that there is a touch response delay if i press anything there is a little bit of delay in the touch response that i have been noticed from a couple of hours now i don't know if you use for long time will it go or will it make problem i don't know as of now it's a little bit there and darfish updater few people ask for it i don't recommend to flash dirty flash or update here you need to flash clean flash and system na navigation you get gesture navigation and uh, there is an option to increase the pill length and radius this is very good if something is very good i definitely point out that and if it is something bad i definitely point out the other also hence they need to fix that quick settings panel and they need to maintain this i really happy that pill length and pill radius options are included in this particular rom and some of the motions options like swipe to screenshot and key keyboard cursor control has been added here you can check out here and if you move into dark space and this is the customization battery settings you get limited here clock and date status bar items if you want you can enable or disable traffic indicators you can see it's also working fine no problem regarding that if you want you can hide in some of the options when inactive status bar items i already shown you miscellaneous settings there is an option to increase the fps count in the games and also the google photos unlimited storage option has been missing here notifications customization you get edge lighting quick settings customization there are few animations also you can customize here lock screen UI again media cover art is given here customization here these are the basic wallpaper i mean home screen customization has been added here moving into other settings like battery and thermal profiles per app you can choose from here and battery usage you can check out here it's fine if you watch from flashing rom from evolution x you can see there was around 97 percent now it's 85 percent which is good in my opinion the battery life is also fine here don't expect like spark os or arrow is kind of battery life compared with the evolution x this is fine enough nothing bad not even good i can say it's a moderate battery usage you can get from this particular rom adaptive battery is given battery optimization you can check out here you can optimize ops apps block sensors you can block the sensors and battery temperature is also given and also let's check the charging animation and will it support 33 watt charging let's see as you can see it's not showing here I don't know what happened you can see here it is showing still the charging slowly only I hope it supports turbo charging or charging rapidly as you can see it is supporting the 33 watt charging support it's it's fine for me at least they added this one in few of the roms that is not the case hence this is how the battery life and charging speeds and 33 watt charging support in this particular rom sound and vibration you get plenty of options here if you come down there is a direct sound settings you get hi-fi audio support also you can enable or disable from here and sound preset you can choose select the scene and headphone type also you can choose from here and some of the basic settings you can enable or disable and ringtones those things you can enable or disable from here do not disturb mode is also added there are customization in do not disturb mode also you can check out on the screen and display settings here also they would have been added some more options like what we see in evolution x i can make 
warmer tone for this display that is simply missing in this particular ROM. It is personal preference but I wish it had in this particular ROM also and adaptive brightness you need to turn on from here there is no option in the quick settings panel and dark theme which is again a good thing here they added this option as you can see there is a pure black option I mean pitch black condition option has been enabled here just enable that you will get a pitch black condition I mean pure black condition has been enabled that's good in my opinion per app refresh rate you can choose from here that's fine here wallpapers and style I already explained accessibility menu which is a handy feature in any Android 12 and 13 just without using the physical buttons you can use volume up and down and recent apps brightness plenty of options you can customize from here that's an handy feature and some of the other options you can check out and display and size you can check out here size and text you can make it out and bold text also you can make out from here those things are fine in my opinion location google maps those are working fine and this is how the actual settings i'm going into app settings here and to the benchmark results you can see the app opening time 3,69,387 and temperature raised was just 1.7 degrees Celsius and battery drop is 3 degrees sorry 3 percentage during this testing which is good in my opinion that's how the uh, Android benchmark results and you can take screenshot and you can clear all from here now moving into Geekbench scores here also which is good in my opinion let me show you as you can see single score is 547 and multi score is 1500 and multi score could have been better kernel user is linux 4.14.290 has been the kernel use because of that the battery life is decent enough you won't expect any great battle but it is still decent in this particular ROM and uh, internet connectivity i have 100 mbps geo giga fiber connection it's pulling up to 90 to 95 mbps even with mobile data connection also it's working fine no problem regarding that too internet connectivity is fine and earpiece quality is fine and headphone jack quality is also fine that hi-fi option you can disable that while using the headphone jack apart from that you can use all the direct sound settings this is the user interface wise and DRM info you get level 1 certification you can check out the app opening time L1 certification such that you can watch all the OTT application in high definition resolution that's not the problem anyhow WhatsApp is also working fine no problem regarding that and camera application you get some Gcam port or something like that if you go here more settings you get basic camera settings here go into video also there is option up to 4k as you can see those are fine in my opinion if you want you can use any other gcam ports like what i always show you the admirable gcam and fm radio is also pre-included in this particular rom safety net status i haven't installed it let's install that you can check out the speed is also and haptic feedback is also fine here there is no options as we see in Android that I want to mention here there are some patterns and intensity in terms of haptic feedback that is simply missing in Android 13 ROMs I hope in the upcoming build it will be added why it is not okay it took a little bit of time to load the place so the installing speeds are fine but taking time and touch response here and there there are problem and as you can see it's get past you can use all the payment applications uh, google pay phone pay everything going to be work fine now moving into pubg mobile or bgma what are the graphic settings we get and how it handle let's check out this is the bgma or pubg mobile you get and the graphic settings is just a yes, smooth plus ultra up to 40 fps gameplay is enabled here there is no option to increase that even in the miscellaneous settings also uh, that has been there in the first Android 12 ROMs. I don't know when the Android 13 ROMs will have that. And for the 40 FPS, the gameplay is fine here. It's not laggy or anything like that. Even touch response in the UI, there is a problem, but in the games, that is not the case, as you can see. And volume panel has been moved left side by default. I haven't changed anything. you can see there's a quick settings panel again 
it's smooth while playing in horizontal i mean landscape mode also while watching videos also you can access it which is fine the gameplay is fine according to 40 fps okay i will come back the pros of this particular rom is 33 watt charging again and dark theme pitch black condition and user interface is also smooth enough apart from minor touch response issues and uh, settings panel is smooth and everywhere it is smooth and the battery life is also decent enough uh, no problems as of now and uh, this pill length everything is fine this is the verdict if you want to use it as a delta you can use it out and uh, what all the shortcomings i said in the video if it doesn't bother you then you can definitely use it as a daily driver mm, i hope you like the video if you like the video give it a like and if you're still not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button guys i'll be making similar kind of videos meet you with another interesting video until that keep smiling bye bye for now